Thank you, my name is Sergio. I'm going to present this paper that is about um, whether it matters where you were born in terms of education and mobility. So I guess a good motivation is the previous presentation where you see that as a circumstance, region matters a lot. Um, so in my paper, it's an attempt to try to get some type of causal estimate of the effect of regions on education and mobility in Latin America. Um, just to clarify the, the um, kind of the concept of mobility that, that, that the paper focuses on, so we have right to uh, we have been talking on this conference about the concepts, different concepts. So we have the absolute mobility concept, where it's basically the progress in absolute terms relative to parents, and the relative concept, where it's like where are you with respect to your peers, and how that relates to your parents with respect to their peers. In this paper. I focus on the absolute mobility concept, and I'm going to measure that um, as the probability of children uh, with parents um, that didn't complete primary education, what is the probability of them completing primary education? So that kind of moving up in terms of educational attainment. I also have in the paper some results using secondary education that might be kind of a margin that is more relevant for the current cohort but I'm going to be using censuses that are kind of old, so I'm going to show you that the primary education here is an important margin. So just to motivate you to, to start, if you compute uh, mo um, upward mobility uh, by region in Latin America, um, and you map those uh, estimates, you can see that within countries, you have a lot of heterogeneity. So for example, you can see in the case of Mexico, in the case of Brazil, you have regions where the levels of upward mobility are very different to other regions. So then, if you take these results right as given, then the question, or one question that you may ask is, why, and is there something in the region that causes these differences, or is it just that people are different, and they choose to live in different places, and that's why you observe this. <coughs> I'm ah, sorry, in between the two plots? Sorry, just more, this is kind of level of uh, pro, um, province and that's level uh, uh, district level. So they are this basically the same, just finer on the, on the right. Uh, but that is the same. So it's the same data, it's just that here the regions are kind of more aggregated than in the, in the, in the plot on, on the right. And of course, if you compute this at the level of country, then you're going to miss all this heterogeneity within the countries. And of course, if you think about the level of, of a time, and especially in Latin America, where you have seen a, a, an important um, kind of mandatory schooling, then of why, if there is mandatory schooling, then within countries you can see all this variation, right? Uh, so within, there is something uh, uh, within countries happening. So then, as I was saying, then the, if there is this heterogeneity, then the question is, is because of sorting, or it's because there is something in the region that might be peers, some policies, some geographical factors that explain these differences. Um, and the distinction is important in terms of public policy, or might be important because it implies different policies like moving people or just focusing resources on, on some particular regions. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to exploit differences in the timing of children moves um, across provinces within countries to isolate the, what is in the literature called regional uh, childhood exposure effect. So it's a place effect that depends on the age in which you move. So in the paper, I contribute to the literature by studying these place effects in a new setting in Latin America, and I'm going to be replicating the approach that was uh, applied in Africa by Alessina, which is the same approach, or is, is based on the Chetty and Hendrick paper, that uses movers in the US across community zones to identify these effects. So as a preview of findings, I find evidence of childhood exposure effects as well as significant sorting. So they sorting, of course, people choose places and they move to better places. Um, and what I estimate is a convergence rate of 3.5% uh, per year of exposure uh, between ages 1 to 11, which implies that if you move to a place with a higher level of upward mobility, you catch up like 35% of the difference is what you get in your chances of uh, 
moving up. And I also uh, find some selection effects that are around 42 percent and are very similar to what is, is uh, has been found in other uh, play, uh, places where this has been uh, done. And I also document uh, childhood exposure effects using secondary education, but I'm not going to show those results here, but basically you find patterns that are very similar. So let me talk about the data. So I use for this paper 21 censuses that I obtained from IPUNS International. They span 11 countries, as you can see in the years. Um, they have, they, I don't have the same number of censuses for all the countries. And they are relatively old, so only a few countries have uh, censuses that are in the 2010s. And then the, there are more, of course, censuses available in Latin America, but these are the ones where you can identify through the questionnaires who moves. Like you have the region, the build location, and you have also how long have they been living in the current place. So, so IPOMS reports uh, these two levels, which are the ones that were in the map. Uh, provinces that are kind of course administrative units, similar to states in the US. So for example, in Brazil, are states. And districts are kind of finer administrative units and similar to counties, if you wish, in, in, in the US. Then there is a variable reporting the province of the previous uh, residents and another reporting build place um, and the number of years living in the current place. So with that, you can identify or classify people between movers and non-movers, so people who live in the same place where they were born, non-movers, and then people who uh, live in a different place, they are the ones that basically migrated within the country. In terms of education, there are two variables. Uh, and I'm going to be using the categorical one, which is, uh, has four categories, uh, complete less than primary, complete primary, complete secondary, and complete tertiary. Uh, this one doesn't reflect any particular system, educational system in the, in the continent. It's more try to follow this, it's harmonized in a way to trying to follow this standard of 633, three, like six primary, uh, lower secondary three, and uh, upper secondary three years. Um, and I also created a variable containing average parents' education using the probable father uh, and mother identified by APOMS using the relationships to the head of the household. So I'm using co-residence here, uh, co-residence samples. Um, so if you kind of do kind of first descriptive plot, just to show that what I was mentioning before, that in the sample, given the time of the censuses, if you Look at the individuals in the sample, age 14 to 25. Uh, you can see in this axis the education level of uh, or the fraction by attainment of the parents, and then on this axis uh, the likelihood of child attainment. And you can see that less than primary is a relevant margin for this particular uh, sample uh, population. And then also you can see that if you take the ones that uh, with parents that did not complete primary then you're very likely to also not complete primary. So you have kind of have, uh, uh, yeah. If you, move in, if you, instead of doing that, you take kind of older individuals that coincide, of course, less with the parents, um, and you use, um, you map them by secondary education, you can see that um, uh, the level the share of population that did not complete, or the parents that did not complete secondary is much larger. And then uh, the share that complete secondary of children also is much smaller. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the intuition of the empirical strategy. So this consists of the following. Suppose we have two regions, A and B, and they have different levels of hour mobility measured as probability of finishing primary for kids with parents that did not finish primary. And ideally, we, you will take right, randomly assign people to, do, to the different regions and see how they do. But of course, they're not feasible. So what, what I do here is to estimate the level of mobility using non-movers as a prediction of the level of mobility of those who move um, and see where, the, where, where they, how they do. So then, um, in the plot, these are the two regions, one region A with low level of mobility, region B with high, uh, higher level of mobility, and then you can map individuals or compute the average uh, 
the probability of field shift primary by H and move a map in the plot, and you can see if they fully converge, then you're going to see that they are going to be close to, to the region B, right, the destination. So they're moving from A to B. If you become like the region of destination, then you should be kind of near the red line here. But if you don't converge to the region of destination, then you should be around here. And if you see this pattern, it means that basically the later you move, the less you converge, right? And then the um, selection effects can be identified in this region because we're talking about primaries. Then the idea here is that if you move later in life and you didn't complete primary, then probably, I mean, of course, we know that some people still later in life complete primary, but, but should be kind of a no effect there. And this was originally done with income, so which is better because you could, for example, measure uh, income at the age of 30 years old, and then if you move at the age of 32, of course, that should not affect your income at earlier, right? So then, as a prediction of the level of mobility of the individuals, I'm going to compute the probability of finishing primary for children who did not, with parents who, from children with parents who did not finish, for using non-movers. So that's going to be the, the, the main variable, and then the variable of interest is going to be this delta ODV, which is the different the mobility of the non of the non-movers between for the cohort um, uh, B, uh, between the destination and the origin. So then for somebody moving from A to B, this delta is going to be the mobility of the non-movers in the region B minus region A. <clears throat> and then the specification is just this one where the dependent variable, the dummy variable, whether an individual completes primary, the sample is composed by individuals with parents that did not complete primary. And then you have some fixed effects by the age of move, so fixed effects by the region of origin and cohort, household fixed effects if you want to compare only siblings, and the main coefficient of interest here is going to be this beta, that is one beta for each age uh, of at move, uh, that interacts with the delta ODV. So it's how the delta between the origin and destination translates into your achievement in terms of education. So those, those 20 betas are basically the ones that were in the plot, right? Um, so that's the semi-parametric approach. So when you estimate that, you're going to have this beta that captures the causal effect, but also selection, because people don't move randomly, right? They choose where to move. So this is going to be basically the two components. And the key assumption for the identification here is that the selection effects don't change uh, with age at, at move. So basically that people who move with kids when they were two, they are not systematically different uh, to people who move when the kids were three, for example. Uh, if you buy that assumption, then you can separate the, effect of the causal effect from the selection effect. Basically, it's doing that subtraction in the area where there should be no causal effect because you are moving later than primary. <clears throat> so I'm going to just show you the, the, the main baseline results. Uh, first, this is an histogram of the deltas. So uh, what is the typical difference in terms of mobility for the movers? And you can see that on average, people move to places where there is more upward mobility. But, but still, you have uh, people who move to places with lower uh, upward mobility. And then this is the, the, the main plot, basically, where you have the H and move, and then you have the dots, and just a line kind of uh, based on relevant kind of type of ages. So if you move before the age of schooling, there is some kind of flat area. Then there is this slope, which means that the, if you move in this, uh, by, by those ages, uh, the effect kind of goes down. And then the area where you can identify the selection effect, which is when you move uh, later than the schooling age, relevant for primary, right? So if you move at the age of 18, then if you move to a place with higher mobility, that should not affect your 
primary completion. So then uh, here, the average slope, if you take all these dots until the age um, 11, is 3.5%. And then the level of uh, selection here is the 42%. In terms of interpretation of this, is that the convergence rate is of 3.5% uh, per year of exposure, which means that if a children move at the age of one, we'll pick up about 35% of the difference between the origin and destination, on average, right? Then this rate of convergence uh, is just a little bit smaller than the 4% uh, found in the US for income mobility across commuting zones and higher than one that has been documented in, in, in Africa. In the case of Africa with education, the same metric. In the case of uh, the US is income mobility, so, the, so it's very different. But they all kind of the, the plots uh, of the same approach capacity looks very similar. So that's very uh, kind of reassuring. And then the selection effect is 42%, uh, uh, which means that families who moved to a region where permanent residents have, for example, 10 percentage points higher uh, chances of completing at least primary, they already have 4.2% uh, more chances themselves. So that's the magnitude of the selection, that people who moved, they were already, they had already more chances of uh, having uh, upward mobility. And then I have a set of validation uh, results that are relatively standard in this literature that is not big, but there are several papers. I'm just going to show you the household fixed effects, and I think I'm going to just go quickly over the other instrumental variable approach that I have in the paper, because I, I don't think I have time. But here is only that in, in the first, uh, in, the main, in, the basic, in the main results, I'm comparing uh, families who move, doesn't matter who, what family, but then in the, here, and adding the family fixed effects or the household fixed effects. So basically then the comparison is between siblings. So a family moves, they have two kids, different ages, they move to a different place, so one of the kids is gonna be exposed to the new region more than the other. So then that's the idea. In the sample of household fixed effects, and here I'm writing the same regression as before, but with with the, sam with the same sample as here, because of course when you add these household fixed effects, your, the sample gets reduced because some families have only one child, so they are not gonna be in the sample. And you can see that this basically is not something about the sample. And you can see here that the selection basically goes to zero, then the slope is relatively similar, and the, you have the same shape just kind of going down. Then the other things, uh, given this shape, another approach to estimate this will be to fit a parametric, right, kind of, kind of these uh, lines, just assuming that the, the, all the deltas here are the same, kind of to just estimate uh, this is slope, this is slope, and this is slope. Um, this is what is here, but I'm not gonna go into details, just to show you that if you do that estimation, you're gonna get kind of those deltas only, and I do that because then I, kind of address the endogeneity using, uh, and here I'm gonna skip the data, just show you that I use some particular flows or periods where there is some uh, anomalous migration outflows. So I take all the origins, I count how many people are going out, then I fit kind of a trend, and I take the residuals, I rank them, and then I, I go kind of restricting the, the, the sample to, flows or periods where more people were going out. So it's, they are not, they are likely to be, uh, be pushed out of the region more than they decided to move because of the educational reasons. When you do that, basically you kind of stay in similar levels in terms of the slopes. Then the other concern is that people endogenously decide where to move. So then I here I just follow kind of the typical a shift share approach where you instrument the, the destinations. Uh, and here is the first stage, and then there is the, uh, uh, the, no, it's not the first stage, the, um, um, I forgot the, the word now. But anyway, in, the, in, the, in these columns, 
you have the reduced form, sorry. This is the reduced form, and here you have the, the two stage list squares. And the results are consistent basically when you instrument the, the destinations with these predictions using previous uh, migration. And when you mix the two approaches, same similar patterns. Uh, so so that, that, that's it. So basically what I find here for Latin America is that people who move to, to places with higher mobility, they kind of catch up with the, to the levels of mobility of the destination, which suggests that there is something in the places uh, and that is not just sorting uh, in, in, in this, in this uh, variation in, in upward mobility. Thank you.